All right, I got rid of those men over there, these messy men talking about all all the things that I know we're not going to talk about in this segment. Uh, I want to introduce to you a member of the European Parliament. She is an elected official representing Germany in the European Parliament. This is Christine Anderson. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having me. You look lovely. She is joined by the co-author of uh, Courage to Face COVID-19, John Leake. And, of course, you wrote this book with Dr. Peter McCullough, who is a good friend of the program. So thank you for being here as well. Thanks for having me. Um, and so you are in town for – tell what are, what, are, what are you here for? What brings you all the way to Dallas, Texas? Well, um, it actually was a, was a tour in Canada. So I flew out uh, on November 25th, had a couple of events in, in Canada. Uh, so it was uh, uh, Vancouver, uh, Winnipeg, and then Ottawa. And uh, then I came down to uh, New York City uh, because I have been honored. Uh, I was received an award, uh, Most Courageous International Leader wow. of 2023. And uh, to be quite frank, I have no idea <laughs> why I'm even here and, and how this even happened. Because the only thing I ever did was, you know, just to do my job, which is to uh, serve in the best interest of the people and to act on their behalf. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And you've been doing this since, what is it, 2019? Yes, I was so, elected in 2019. So right. you've been handling this whole, this navigating this process during what was the craziest time in yeah. all of our lives. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> just to see uh, how easy it was for them, you know, to tear down our, the very foundation of our democracies, turning fundamental rights into privileges that the government can grant or withhold, depending on how you behave. Um, that was quite uh, astonishing to see. Mm -hmm. And just to think, it, it didn't even take them that long. It was, like, it was not even a year. And society, once again, once again, was ready to harass people and pop public transportation for not wearing a mask and rat out neighbors uh, for having more people at the dinner table than they were supposed to, to lock down people. And uh, yeah, that really sent shivers down my spine, I really have to tell you. Um, because uh, like I said, my country, we have experienced really dark times and uh, we've been there and done that. And I thought we would never see any of that again. Yeah. But here we are. Yeah. Uh, John, you wrote a book about COVID-19. I, I right did, and, and there's another, another point of contact here. I, just before 2020, I was living in Vienna, Austria, Austria being the southern German-speaking neighbor of Germany, mm -hmm. and I had a long interest in, in Germany and Austria. They were, in an ill-fated way, joined in 1938, and I had much the same perception that Christina did, I wondered, and I actually posted about this in social media, why have the Germans apparently learned nothing mm -hmm. yeah. from the lessons between 38 and 45? Mm -hmm. And so we discovered that we have the very similar perception of, of this social and political dynamic that happens, can happen, and will probably happen again when you have yeah. extreme fear being propagated mm -hmm. and then state-sponsored propaganda that is being further propagated by the media, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be critically reflecting exactly. on it and questioning it. But we, as we saw, both in Germany and in the United States, the mainstream media was completely on board. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, so I, I want to, you mentioned, you know, obviously you're from Germany, so it really hits home to you to be talking about, you know, like you said, ratting on people for having too many, you know, members at the dinner table, things of that nature. Um, I want to get your thoughts on this. So um, at the time, there was an Ohio representative, uh, Warren Davidson, who came under fire for tweeting, uh, comparing vaccine passports with the health pass that Nazi officials required, uh, among other documents, of course, for citizens to carry around with them. Um, what, does that, was he far off the mark there? No, he absolutely was not, because that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And we really are seeing this absurdity now that, um, I mean, the entire world seems to be on board with uh, the promise never again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but how are we supposed to live up to that promise if we are not allowed to point out the, the very incremental steps that were taken back then? Right. 
Um, I mean, the Nazis came to power in 33, but the Nazis did not start out by rounding up people and transporting them off to camps. Mm. That happened. That was the end point, right? So these incremental steps. And if I were to point out and, you know, show the parallels of what, what is happening now, then I'm immediately being accused of tri trivializing the Holocaust, mm -hmm. which is uh, an offense uh, punishable by law, and it could land me in jail. Yeah. But once again, how are we supposed to live up to the promise of never again if we are not allowed to teach the next generation? Okay, okay this is what happened back then, and, you know, Sounds familiar what they're doing right now. So we should be, you know, right. have been taking a look at that and maybe we should stop it right now. It's completely absurd what's going on. So, no, he was he was ab absolutely right, because that's exactly what the Nazis did. It was all about hygiene. You know, it was apparently the Jews were spreading diseases mm -hmm. and that that was it was the Nazis used to have the segregation and, yeah. you know. Didn't we see that in the last three years? Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, we did. I, I think that, that what puzzles the public, people have this idea that a totalitarian system such as we had in, in Germany in, in the 30s and 40s just suddenly announces itself, a full-blown exactly. dictatorship, right. Right. You know, with right. marching soldiers and Gestapo right. Right. officers running around with dogs and stuff. It doesn't emerge and manifest in a full-blown, just out of nowhere. It's not like Zeus throwing right. a lightning bolt and suddenly there it is. It's incremental. Mm -hmm. And of course it's being presented with a, with a, a, and a packaging of altruism. Well, you know, we're here to protect you. We're all in this together. That's yeah. an old fascist motto, slogan, by the way. Yeah. We're all in this together. We're all in this boxcar together. Right. Um, so it's important I, I would say first and foremost f for everyone, whether they be residents or citizens of Germany or the United States or anywhere else, the first thing that we have to get really alarmed about is censorship. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the forbidden fruit. Once you say some censorship is okay, then you're on a very slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And in fact, let's let's go ahead. We got to take a quick break really fast. And then when we come back, I want to I want to dig a little bit more into that because I want to hear from um, from both of you. But um, in particular, you know, we say in the United States that certain things start to happen over in Europe and then it kind of trickles down to the United States. I'm not sure that it's a trickle down within, you know, five, 10 years. I think it's all happening at a much more accelerated rate. If you like that clip, there is plenty more where that came from. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to the News and Why It Matters YouTube channel to watch the full episode.